All right, what's going on everybody? Physio Trader here, and I know I've been gone and absent for a while, but I'm just so busy with work. Barely actually able to make that many trades in a week or so to speak for myself. And so, um, you know, I'm not just hanging out and keeping things away from you or hiding anything, uh, no major catastrophic events or, or anything like that. I'm just, I'm too busy with, with uh, you know, with my job, with my, my company, and I'm just, I'm too busy, but I do want to get down. I do want to be able to kind of talk about more of this because this is actually not only, you know, something I just do, um, but it's, it's very helpful for me. It lays out my trade plans, what I'm thinking, just gets it on paper so that I can, you know, have, um, you know, more time to detail to go through it. So let's dive in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at the watch list, uh, create the watch list, which is basically the same basket of stocks I'm always looking at. I've been lately thrown in futures to see, you know, more for a directionality of which way I want to go up, down. Do I think the market's going to trail sideways? And I'll be the first one to say, I thought the market was going to go down. I thought we were going to sell off. We got a big rip and a pop. And so far things look like they are just going to keep on going to the upside. So um, let's take a look. All right, so we do have uh, Think or Swim over here. Uh, I'm gonna slide you on over to my, my six linked charts over here so we can kind of take a look at these. Um, but right now we have these six charts, they are all linked. We've got the NQ, um, the Futures, NASDAQ up here. Uh, up here in the top left we have, ooh, it's like four hours, we don't want that. Um, so we're gonna put this at the five minute. And then we have the 15, the 30 minute, the one hour, the four hour, and then the daily. So, um, but <clears throat> basically as I do is I just take a look at all of these and uh, kind of see where I'm, I'm interested in. We can see here on the day, it looks like we've pretty much been straight up, a little bit of a cooling off and then sideways. As you can see, the whole market seemed to kind of sell off at the last bit. But again, look at that. Look where we came out on the five, uh, on the five minute right here. Now, as you can see, as the rest of the market followed through where we could not make that second new high and then we did kind of um, have a little bit of a displacement down to the downside. So um, with that, I'm just gonna make this one bigger for uh, simplicity's sake. And then let's uh, let's cut back to the four hour. Um, all right, let's see, we have ourselves a very clear All right, so I like that line. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come over here, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say extend to the right. And so now I see this line just got extended for me. I don't have to worry about making sure it's perfect and straight. But as you can see, even if this thing comes down, we'd have to cross through this little short-term trend line, this short-term trend line. I'm not really sure which one I like better. Um, I drew it there, so I'm gonna keep it for now. And from there, it's just see if this thing wants to come back down. A lot of things would have to happen to get it to come down. But again, the further these two diverge away from each other, the more bullish this gets, the more likelihood that there is going to be some pretty sizable pullback that is going to, you know, give it some level of resistance. Now, after this big gap up over here, we've got ourselves basically no man's land. So if we do reclaim this to the downside, then we do have an opportunity where this thing could just really, really bleed off. And people think, oh my gosh, the market's turning around. And all it's doing is consolidating right back to that 50 simple moving average, which is still very bullish. So I don't like it up here. I don't, I don't, I'm not saying chase it. I'm not saying don't, I'm not chasing it. That's what I'm saying is I'm not saying I won't trade it, but a long term, I think the market's got a lot of sideways potential or reversal clearing near the top that I'm not looking to go long on this thing. Uh, again, that's just my trading strategy. But as you can see here, I mean, all all news uh, to the upside and of course being election year, things are traditionally speaking pretty darn bullish. So let's just check out the ES real quick and then uh, we'll follow suit. Um, looking real simple, everything's basically the exact same back to the upside here. So let's just make this bigger. Um, let's go, we're gonna start from a weekly. I mean, yeah, this thing's so bullish. I mean, you don't short this thing. That That's a recipe for disaster. Absolute recipe for disaster. Um, I'm gonna skip the daily for now because we can kind of presume what it's gonna look like. Uh, same deal here. This thing is, all right, so we're just gonna go over here. Let's extend it to the right. And as you can see, I could see this thing consolidating at the 5,500. I mean, look at this itty bitty channel down here. We have nice bull flag. Uh, you know, big gap up, bull flag, and then this thing, we've got ourselves some continuation, but that doesn't mean the continuation is going to keep going on. I'm not trying to sound boohoo bearish on it. I just think that the bulls, 
which are very clearly in control, at some point will lose it. And I'm not looking to be the one who's longing the top. Um, I would like to see this come down and then I've got myself a, a risk parameter of where I've, I'm not a fan of blue sky breakouts unless I'm already in the trade. I don't like to buy long. I'm not a momentum trader. I don't long uh, blue sky breakouts. So right now I need things to, to pair off a little bit. And as a whole, June tends to, in my opinion, tends to be a, a giving month where it gives a lot of things back. I could be wrong, but it tends to be a, a month where things are given back. And so I don't want to be, uh, you know, I don't want to be the one caught doing that or, or kind of stuck waiting around holding that. So um, let's go. Apple, for the most part, had a very bullish day. Um, now, Apple, you know what, I'm just going to keep this big and we'll go... Uh, line by line. So overall, very, very bullish on Apple. Apple's introduced into the AI space. Um, and we've got ourselves this big, big candle, a little bit of a wick sell off. No, no, uh, no surprise there. And then we are going to get ourselves that continuation. Uh, the question is, is does this thing going to keep continuing out? This is a weekly candle. I actually think we got pretty darn close to, let's see, we got uh, the high on this one was 218.95, so we did not get to break uh, 219. Um, I'm, I'm like so bullish on this thing. Um, if this thing breaks 220, I see us going from 220 to 237 very, very quickly. Uh, I don't want to get into why I think 237 specifically, and it is somewhat a, a number I just pulled because it is a blue sky breakout number. Um, but the 37s for me tends to be a kind of a sticking point. So I do think we'd go from 220 to 237 pretty quickly. We, of course, we don't, we don't have much support. So we, we do have a lot of buyers. Clearly, a lot of buyers are stepping in. And I do think, I said before, at this 210, this 210 212, 215 area, uh, a lot of people who miss this run up are going to start buying that dip. And do I do think there is going to continue. I don't think this thing's going to turn back around. I could be completely wrong. We do have ourselves a very clear break and retest point right here. So here's the break, 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 um, or here's the, the resistance. We do have ourselves a break. Uh, this thing very well can attempt to break and then come down and retest. Full disclosure, I am long a 215 call that expires in three weeks. Uh, I think that we, if we do break the um, 220, I think this thing could really get moving and I'm hopeful that it happens you know, tomorrow so that I can get rid of it and roll that, either roll that option out or just, uh, you know, close for a, a, a sweet gain. Um, but if I'm wrong, then I still have enough time where the, the Greeks are not going to destroy me, in which case I can reevaluate and see if I want to hold or uh, get out of the way. But as you can see here, we had ourselves this just big, big drop uh, that coincides with the NASDAQ doing its drop towards the 50 simple moving average. Um, the fact that we did not continue to drop and come down here is actually leaving me quite bullish uh, because if you look at these uh, these upper shadow wicks, uh, we, we are really breaking through this trend right here. So we do have ourselves a little bit of a trend where uh, we very clearly broke. It could come down and retest, but I don't think so. I think this purple line is going to keep going up, that 50 simple moving average. It's going to keep going up, and I'm very bullish on this. I'm not saying that tomorrow it's just going to wake back up and go above 220, but I think very quickly, I bet by the end of the week, we are going to have a designated uh, continuation. So this thing is going to continue to the upside or it's not. But I think by the end of the week, we are going to know with great certainty uh, how things are looking. Tesla over here continues to play uh, hit or miss. Uh, we've been stuck in this channel. We've had a lot of bullish things lately that are moving Tesla or potentially bullish to move Tesla to the upside. Uh, one of which is uh, confirming Elon's pay package, which is, I believe, to be, although bearish on the stock itself, the fundamentals, bullish in the sense that people will now think Elon himself will remain invested in the company, which is a bullish uh, a trend to the upside. Uh, we do have some, I mean, from a technical, pure technical perspective, I mean, this thing's bearish. We're, we're putting in lower highs, lower highs, lower highs. Yeah, we've got ourselves a little bit of a holding pattern in here, but I've said before, I'm, I'm not a fan. Um, I want to see this thing break 194 before I get interested in going long. Now, I do understand that that puts me at the higher risk in the sense of chasing the move. But I think if we can, after many times, after all of these failed uh, negative bounces uh, or failed uh, pulls to push it a lower, if we can break through this, then this thing does have an area to go higher. However, however, we do have ourselves this resistance and this downsloping 50 SMA, which is a contention. An area of contention and may get into the way so i do want to be very clear with that 
Uh, over on the four hour, I mean, this thing is just, it's bullish. We're, we're moving to the upside, but the market right now has been bullish. Today was a bullish day overall. So, uh, but despite that, the NASDAQ dropping off, this thing did not drop off and we're still maintaining that bullishness. I think uh, over 194, I'm interested in a call. Um, it, over 194, I think I would trade a 190 call, um, you know, three weeks out or so and, and see if that thing could break over 200 and get moving. That, that call could really, uh, really present as a, a good RVR. That's my opinion at this moment and um, stick into it. NVIDIA. I don't know where this came from. This 195, um, th that's really screwing with the uh, the chart. Unfortunately, I don't know if it's a option contract or, or anything that got spread between the split, but the, the, the split is throwing off the chart a little bit here, but you can see um, this thing's just constantly picking up momentum, constantly picking up momentum. At some point, I do actually think we are gonna have a break and retest towards this, uh, what is now a $98 uh, potential from down from 130, although, um, this 129, 130 area, you know, we're either going to, you know, break and hold and continue to the upside. It could be just a sideways thing, or we are going to come back down again. This is a weekly chart though. So lots of, lots of things could happen. I'm concerned that Nvidia is a bit too overhyped, um, and that companies are, are too overhyped with the AI cycle and that eventually there is going to be some profit taking and some give back. But, um, you know, looking over on the four hour, coming down to the 50 simple moving average, coming down to the 200 simple moving average, uh, 101 is an area, but right here, uh, around 95, I think that's just a, a there's so much by the dip on this one. Um, you know, I, I see this in the, the 125 to 120 range. There's just going to be so many buyers that present that I find a very hard absence of a negative catalyst to continue to move this thing to the downside. Although it did look like we had a pretty hard time going to the upside on this one. So you can see here, we basically went sideways for many hours and then we failed to hold. So again, this thing could go to the downside. So I wanna be very clear. I have not looked at these charts in a long time. And so these things could be off a little bit. Um, AMD previously was a big, AMD previously a big beneficiary of the Nvidia hype cycle. As you can see, it, it uh, failed to hold. We do get ourselves a little bit of a bounce here. Uh, I think this thing's gonna try to find its, its rhythm somewhere between 130 and 160. I know it's a big range, but I do think somewhere between the 130 and 160 is a good range. I do like this. I do think there's gonna be a continued break and retest towards that 133. And uh, I'm interested in longing it, but I do actually wanna see this thing come back down towards that 130, 133 area. And then I think it just sets me up for a better risk versus reward. Absence of breaking through that, that uh, support line, and I would give that support line wiggle room up to 128. Absence of the lower part of this wick and the body of this wick, these two things, uh, as you can see where that line just perfectly entails the two, um, below that 128.50 ish area, um, that's my zone. That's my zone of, um, that's my wiggle room. Below that, just get out of the way, let that thing go all the way down to that 200 simple moving average if it is going to do it. I'm not saying it is, but um, I'm, I, my overarching theme is the market is a bit overbought and going sideways or dropping in something that's already been dropping um, is going to feel a little bit more of that gravitational pull and things will be going down. So that's just my, my thought. Saving some time here, uh, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high. I mean, this thing's trending downward. This thing's trending downward while everything else is shooting straight up to the upside. This thing is trending downward. So that doesn't give me a lot of room of uh, comfort when it comes to these, uh, these trades here. So let's see. Microsoft's moving to the upside. Let's see about Meta. Uh, I'm just going to floss through some of the things I haven't looked at lately. Um, Square, let's, I'm going to switch these to uh, weekly charts real quick. No, not, not, not digging Square. Um, Home Depot, sure. Um, Amazon, still in the 180s. Yeah, it's still in the 180s. Okay, not too terrible, but it is getting closer to that 50 simple moving average. Netflix, that's still in the 600s. 675, not bad. Uh, I did Microsoft, I didn't pay attention. 450, uh, Meta is around 500, 506. So a little bit of a bullish day. Um, Alibaba, eh. Yeah, I mean, actually overall, I'm, 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 
I, I want to be clear, I'm bullish on the market, but I think the market's a bit overbought, and I think there's an opportunity for some selling. Not that I'm shorting it, but it's more like I'm just going to politely get out of the way. So uh, I'm going to cut it off there just because uh, I don't have anything, and I don't, I don't have any my charts set up right now. But um, all right, so that, that's my trade plan. Let things fizzle out a little bit. Let them calm down. Um, I'm very bullish on Tesla. So Tesla's probably my number one winner I'm going to throw on the watch list and see if we can get a break above uh, 194. And again, full disclosure, I am in that Apple call as we speak. Uh, I do want to see if that thing pans out. I got about, I think I have two or three weeks left on it. So uh, I want something to happen by this Wednesday. Today is Monday. Um, so by, by Wednesday, the end of Wednesday, if this thing is just going sideways, then I'll probably cut it for uh, a small gain or small loser, depending on where the numbers close out on my strike is, I believe it's 215, I believe. Um, but we'll see if that thing doesn't break above 220 and 220 quickly, then it could work out well. But if not, then um, that or I'll just roll it out and I'll, I'll roll it a couple weeks longer. Um, see if I can do that. But that is it for me. If you have any questions, reach out. Again, I apologize for my absence and uh, thank you so much and I'll catch you on the next one.